Hi, I'm Dr. Christiane Northrup, an OBGYN physician and authority on everything that can go right with your body. And I'm here to tell you how to transform your health and truly flourish while making your life easy. Are you in relationship with an energy vampire? Fully 25% of all people, male and female, have vampire characteristics. This is also known as narcissism or full-blown cluster B. That's the psychiatric term in the DSM-5, the Manual for Psychiatric Disorders. That's 20% of people, one in five. Energy vampires can be a parent, a colleague, or even someone you consider to be a friend. But unless you have been threatened by an energy vampire, you may not even realize you're dealing with one of them because they can be so very charming when they are love bombing you and they want something. That is, until they start criticizing, punishing, shaming, or rejecting you. In this video, I'm going to share how you can protect yourself against the energy vampires in your life, or at least recognize them. So, what is an energy vampire? Energy vampires are people who feed off of the life force of others. They do this by targeting empaths or highly sensitive people. I like to say, you haven't been chosen. You've been targeted, but they're often so charismatic. Oh, he's paying attention to me. He likes me. You know, and I was not the popular kid in eighth grade. And now this person sees that you, you will be providing them energy and they just tell you how wonderful you are. They play right into the wounds of the empath and tell you what you've always been longing to hear. Oh, where have you been all my life? Um, you are such a good doctor. Um, thank God I found you. You're the only one who can help me. And that little part of you goes, oh, I can help. Anyway, energy vampires are often what empaths consider fixer uppers but they're really cluster B personality disordered individuals. And that includes sociopaths, antisocial people, psychopaths, that's one in 25 people is a real psychopath. Okay, those are people with no conscience. When we hear the term psychopath, we think psychopathic killer. Most are not. They're operating under the radar and they're running major corporations. Then there are the everyday narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder, and then borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and the types of behaviors that these energy vampires engage in are overly dramatic or antisocial, binge drinking sometimes, compellingly charming, they threaten self-injury or suicide, or they love bomb you. They do not have a biochemical problem. They have a character disorder. Their moral compass doesn't exist. And that's what you need to know. And they often know exactly what they're doing. So how relationships with energy vampires make you sick. In my decades on the front lines of women's health, I've seen so many people suffering from adrenal fatigue, chronic Lyme disease, irritable bowel syndrome, thyroid disorders, inability to lose weight, diabetes, breast cancer, autoimmune disorders, and so-called mystery illnesses, and most, if not all the time. These illnesses do not respond well to standard medical treatments. Why? Because the root cause is a relationship with an energy vampire, either at work or at home. No medication, diet, or amount of meditation or yoga or acupuncture will help until you resolve the energy drains caused by the relationship. So there are several ways that the stress of being in an energy vampire relationship causes your health to deteriorate. One, that kind of stress causes cellular inflammation, the root cause of all chronic degenerative disease. The stress of trying to fix someone and having to deal with constant disappointment, negativity, deception leads to a cascade of stress hormones in your body. When constantly under stress, your adrenals produce cortisol. And when cortisol levels remain high, your body actually produces inflammatory chemicals called cytokines. You ever seen anyone on prednisone? You know how they gain weight no matter what they eat. Their skin gets thin, they bruise easily, they're more susceptible to every kind of illness. It's like when you're in relationship with an energy vampire, you're on this prednisone all the time. 
Symptoms that this can cause are headaches, joint pain and swelling, arthritis, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, digestive problems, weight gain, eventual diabetes and heart disease. Remember what I said, chronic cellular inflammation is the root cause of almost all degenerative diseases. Being in relationship with an energy vampire wreaks havoc on your immune system. People under constant social stress experience what's called dysregulation of their immune systems. They're vulnerable to infectious disease and so-called autoimmune disorders. This encourages poor dietary choices. Oh my God, I need a drink, I need a donut. Because when you're constantly under stress and not feeling well, you don't feel up to cooking a healthy meal and the excess cortisol causes you to crave sweets, reach for, like I said, the alcohol or the sugar, leading to weight gain, the inability to get a good night's sleep, eventual brain changes. Brain scans show that people who've lived with an energy vampire have cognitive dissonance and it gives you brain changes similar to those who have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Cognitive dissonance is this. It's when your closely held beliefs about something clash with your actual experience. So here's an example. All people are good at heart, but you're li living with someone who keeps treating you like crap and you keep making excuses for their crummy behavior. Oh, it's because of a difficult childhood. It isn't, by the way. So what happens is cognitive dissonance triggers neuroendocrine hormone cascading problems. Researchers have found that PTSD and trauma are associated with a higher risk of developing lupus. One study suggests that stress-related neuroendocrine hormones lead to immune system dysregulation by altering or amplifying cytokine production. That's the science. You don't need to know the science. You just need to know how to get out of there. So here are the warning signs that you're in an energy vampire relationship. Some of the ways you can tell are they show no interest in the things that interest you. They stop communicating. After love bombing you and showering you with attention, they will often act distant. They give ult ultimatums. They blame you. They're professional victims. No matter what's happening, someone else is doing it to them. Energy vampires refuse to take responsibility. They withhold or demand sex. Energy vampires often use sex as a weapon. They keep score. It's a ledger relationship. I did this for you, you owe me. Energy vampires keep track. Now, they believe that their good deeds are greater than what they receive from you. They often threaten to leave. They put you down. They do another thing called triangulation. They talk about you behind your back. They don't come to you directly. And then they poison other people, maybe even your family members, against you. They have what Melanie Tonya Evans calls flying monkeys that they send out to uh, protect themselves and put you down. So how do you deal with this? Here are some of the ways to protect yourself from energy vampires. The first one is realize they exist. They don't have your best interests at heart. They are not good at heart. Keep that in mind. Now, as I'm talking, I'll bet you, you got some names coming up in your head. That's your gut instinct. That's telling you the truth about someone. And then it, because if you're an empath and you believe the world is good, you just don't want to believe it. Believe it. You need to find a reality check friend. Somebody who says, look, I knew that when I met them. Um, you've got to have someone who tells you, like if your friends don't like this person, you got to think about it. Now, you need to put yourself and your own needs first, which will make you feel guilty at first. But let's do the pledge allegiance to yourself. Ready? Do this with me. I pledge allegiance to myself and to my soul for which I stand. I honor my goodness, my gifts, and my talents. I commit to remaining loyal to myself from this moment forward for all of my days. Now, pat yourself on the back regularly. God, you did a good job today. Learn how to say no. If it's too difficult, which it will be if you're a good empath, start by saying, I'll get back to you. When someone asks you to do something, the first thing you're going to want to do to please them is say, oh yeah, I can do it. I can help you move on Saturday, even though you'd planned a movie or a spa date. 
No, you say, I'll get back to you. Stop the knee jerk, yes, and get support. Here's the support you need. A psychotherapist who specializes in narcissistic abuse recovery. This is relatively new. 25 years ago, when my colleague George Simon started to teach this to therapists, uh, they didn't, many walked out of the room. They didn't want to believe that this existed. There are narcissistic abuse recovery groups. There are so many YouTube videos. If you go to a couples therapist, you need to go to someone who knows how to deal with a character disordered individual because many narcissists have a, had a lot of couch time and they can talk almost any therapist out of um, seeing that they are the problem. They have a lot of couch time. So you must go to someone who understands personality disorder. Okay, so for more inspiration and tips, Visit my blog and explore drnorthup.com where you will find wisdom for your body, mind, and spirit. Visit daily to discover the connection between your thoughts, your beliefs, your physical health, and your life circumstances. And remember, even if you're in a relationship with an energy vampire, there's so much you can do. You are in the driver's seat of your health and you can make profound changes.